Oh, I am so looking forward to our conversation because I know that I'm going to be learning just as much as you are. Uh, this is Lauren Fogelman with Business Success Solution. And today's topic is don't get lost in the numbers, map your firm to growth. And we're going to be having a conversation with Janelle Harlow. So some of the things we're going to be covering is unlocking your firm's growth potential with strategic mapping, elevating your client experience to boost retention, and architect your firm for success. I suggest you have pen and paper ready because Janelle is going to be generously sharing, and then we'll let you know how you connect with her as we wrap up. A little bit about Janelle Harlow. She's a certified public accountant and a senior accountant at Step-by-Step -Step Accounting, which is fully crowd-based, and she teaches oriented accounting and advisory. That's how the firm is. Um, and they've been recently named as one of the top 50 wooded accounting firms for 2023. Janelle's on a mission and it's to help business owners manage their finance, finances and achieve growth. By providing guidance and as well as insights, she empowers business owners to be confident in making informed decisions which drive their companies forward, something we all want. And she's also an advanced QuickBooks, certified QuickBooks Pro Advisor. And part of step-by-step -step accounting is that they provide outstanding accounting and fractional CFO services to clients in the Midwest. And Janelle actually lives in North Dakota. She values family, living that balanced lifestyle and lots of cream in her coffee. If you wanna find out more about Janelle and Step-by-Step -step Accounting, you can go to stepbystepaccounting.com and get all the details there. Okay, Janelle, I am so looking forward to this conversation because I know that I'm gonna learn from it also. But before we get started, I'd like to find out a little bit about how you became aware of mapping as a way to successfully grow a firm? Well, mapping has always been around. Um, and um, in, in the past, when you talked about mapping and it was always workflow is what you were mapping. I can think of the old uh, flow charts you know, whenever we saw a flow chart, that was how we were mapping. Mapping has evolved. Um, we're not just looking at mapping as getting directions to go someplace. We're now looking at mapping as being able to visualize data or information to better understand it, to be able to see the patterns and to make smarter choices. Um, some reasons to map in a business is mapping for consistency. We want the same result every time. Uh, businesses are now retaining their clients because of consistent quality of their experience with them. Um, if you think about the concept of the turnkey franchise model in the E-Myth, mm -hmm. um, no matter who's working, the experience is always smooth and reliable. Other reasons we map is for efficiency. Time is a precious commodity for everyone now. And businesses want to get things done quickly, easily, but still have that quality to remain at a high level. Uh, by mapping out how things are done, you can find those little extra steps that um, you may be taking. Uh, bottlenecks where information is being held up before it can get to the next level. Um, and also pain points, not only for your clients where they're just sitting and going, oh, I don't enjoy this but also for your employees. You will notice that the work is getting done faster. You can actually increase your workload because now you have this process and the quality is remaining at that high level. So um, someone, we, go ahead, go, uh, go ahead, I'm listening. <laughs> um, other reasons that we map is for scalability. As a business evolves and grows, uh, they have to navigate expansion without compromising their performance or the client's satisfaction. So mapping can help businesses plan for the future by figuring out when do they need more workers? Do they need to change their software? Do they need to change their equipment? Do they need to find a new location? That is sometimes mm. um, an, another key point uh, with businesses is are you in the, 
the right location for your customers or clients to reach you. Okay. Uh, and of course, my favorite, we map to find measurements. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, for those key performance indicators, because uh, if we can measure it, we can report it. If we can report it, we can improve it. <laughs> and and sometimes it's is it possible to also uh, map out the intangibles, so the things that aren't as concrete uh, as far as KPIs go. Um, so the softer side of a business, is it possible to map that out as well? Yes. Um, because as you go through your, your mapping process and you find things like that you can measure. So mm -hmm. taking your, um, lead conversion, mm -hmm. uh, how many, uh, contacts have you gotten? How many proposals, how many of that has turned into proposals that you have done and how many of those proposals have resulted in onboarding clients for your business? That, that that's very helpful. Um, so part of what I see is that mapping has so many different uses. It, it's a very, very rich tool that you can use for your business and that it gives you the visuals that you can clearly see as to the bottlenecks that might affect growth. And, and that's what I've been having a lot of conversations with firm owners about right now is the bottlenecks. And a lot of times they realize that it's them as the CEO that is affecting the scalability and the expansion of their own firm. So mapping might be something that tends to highlight the whole process of where things get stuck so that you can go ahead and eliminate that bottleneck and then open you up for expansion. Uh, does that sound about right as to have one way that you would apply that? Yes. Um, and we'll talk a little bit uh, later about the mm -hmm. architectural um, viewpoint of mapping. Um, but mapping is very visual. Um, one of the best ways to map is uh, post-it notes in a wall. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, if you gather, and of course, whenever you do a mapping exercise, you want the people who are involved in those processes to be there because um, they know what is going on. And once you start mapping it and putting the post-it notes on the wall, you start to see, oh, so I get to this point and then it has to go to this person and it goes here and then it comes back and then it comes over here. And sometimes it's just your efficiency, the workflow efficiency is not as smooth as it could be. So you can make those changes right on the spot. And and I think that what you talk about by bringing in the whole team is very helpful because sometimes what we think as a firm owner and then what's actually going on are two different processes. The, the people that are in the day-to-day, -day, they know things that firm owners have no idea about. Yeah, yeah. They, they and, know when the copier is broken and how long it takes for a repairman to get there and get it back up and going. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. So can you give an example about how maybe mapping has helped to improve a business or a firm? Um, oh, a good example. I had a client. They're no longer with us. Mm -hmm. um, but when they came on board through the onboarding process, they kept talking about the e-myth and how they read the book. They were going to run their business on the e-myth. Okay. So um, after about three months, the business owner hired an office manager and asked us to be involved in the training process for that office manager. And so I came on site, I went to their business and I'm like, okay, um, what do you want your your office manager to do? What tasks are they going to be responsible for? And he just looked at me and I'm like, okay, remember the e-myth, you uh -huh. know, where's, where's your procedures where, you know, where, you know, what tasks are assigned to this position? And he looked at me again and I'm, you know, at that point we stepped out, <laughs> um, the employee had stepped out and I was talking to him and I'm like, 
you kept talking about how you were set up to be an e-myth company and you know where's your documentation where's your business plan what what's going on here and he's like well i just figured that once i started making more money i could hire someone to do all that for me um so in the the year that he was with us um before he left he was on his third office manager so he was still more or less when an office manager came in uh he was saying here's your desk mm -hmm. and you know i i hope he finally understood um the the only workflow that they had was i had mapped out the workflow from invoice to um or if someone placed an order, what steps had to be taken before mm -hmm. an invoice could be sent out to them? Um, that was the only policy that they had. Now we have other companies, organizations with us, um, nonprofits who have very strict internal controls. Um, by mapping out internal control for their accounts payable, we had now have our workflow for them. Mm -hmm. And anytime the piece is missing, we can send a message to them saying, hey, we're missing this little piece of information in this process. Could you provide it? And so it just allows us to be able to look at the big picture of what services that we are going to be providing and how we are going to provide it for each client that we have. I, I really appreciate you um, sharing that because part of what I'm hearing is that based on the E-Myth, which is one of the first books that I read as well, you are really creating a position and then you're looking to put the right person in that position so that they know what the expectations are and there's a lot of transparency. The other thing that i um, really hearing from you, um, similar to the McDonald's uh, analogy, is that systems give you freedom. If yes. you're able to have the systems, there's so much that happens that avoids mistakes and reduces frustration because of the fact that it is all standardized. And the last thing that you were mentioning, which I really want to highlight, is that it's not like you map out once and it's done and you never look at it again. This is something that actually evolves over time as you're using it so that it actually improves efficiency or adapts to the growth of a business. Yes. So, so and, it's not like you just do it and you put it away. Right. And that is a very good point that I try to make uh, to everyone. Um, the system that you are creating, these, uh, and the system consists of um, all of your processes and methodologies and other things that we'll uh, discuss later, but your documents have to be considered living. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard them also described as evergreen or dynamic. Um, what this means is that they are changed. They are updated as your business grows and adapts. Mm -hmm. And that is the, the biggest thing. Your business is alive. Your documents should be alive as well because they are going to, alongside of each other, grow and evolve. And, and it's a more strategic approach. Uh, one, one of the things that you did mention earlier was architecture mapping. So now you have my curiosity. I, I would like to hear more about what that actually means. Okay. Uh, let's get into architecture. Mm -hmm. So the best way, I've got uh, two images that you're going to have um, as I go through this model. And the first one, is going to be a theater, okay? Um, so imagine people are coming into the theater and they're finding their seats. They look up at the stage, waiting for something to happen. Uh, then the curtain comes up and you walk out and you start talking to your audience. Um, the stage is going to represent the forefront of your business, the front end of your business where your client engagement and interaction is taking place. Behind the stage, behind that curtain um, that the audience cannot see, is this whole system in place to support what is happening on the stage. So it's kind of um, uh, the stage 
is where you're showing your performance and the backstage is where everything runs smoothly. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in that backstage is where you're going to have the things that need to happen for you to present to your client. And what you're going to find is if you think of the main stage as the first level in your structure for mm -hmm. your system, okay, uh, on that main stage is where the touch points are going to happen between the business and your client. And these are the moments that are going to shape your client's experience with you. It's on the stage that you're actually going to be showing your clients how much you care about them, uh, making them happy, and also delivering great products and services to them. Then you come up a level, mm -hmm. and that's where you're going to have the tasks that need to be completed. And uh, here we're going to shift into your processes and your methodologies and your workflows. Okay. Where you do not have a workflow um, or your routine day-to-day -day operations that are going on that happen every single day the same way, um, you're going to want to create a policy. And that's going to provide a framework to empower your team to navigate through those situations that have not occurred before. Okay. So mm -hmm. the first level is going to be the main stage where you're interacting with your client. The second level is going to be the tasks that need to be completed. Then we need to come up a little bit further. And in this point, you almost want to start imagining a tree. So mm -hmm. you've got um, things coming up. So now we get into the canopy of that tree. And we're going to be talking about the third level is what equipment or technology, what things do you need in order to complete those tasks, whether it's the software, the machinery or equipment or other digital tools. Um, this is going to help you be more efficient, to streamline your operations, increase your workload without decreasing that quality. Okay. And also in level three is where you're going to see your business growth. Um, because as you are going through your things that you need to complete tasks, there may be a software out there um, that is outside of your budget. Uh, you don't have the client base and the revenue to um, to get that piece of software. Mm -hmm. So you're going to set yourself a goal. And as you set yourself goals, you're going to be growing your business. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so once you meet your goal and you're able to get that software, that's going to increase your efficiency. You're going to uh, be able to increase your workload by X amount um, and your quality is going to remain the same. Okay. Yep. Uh, the fourth level is where we're going to start talking about the position. <clears throat> what position in your organization is going to be responsible for completing those tasks? Now, um, I did not say person first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Organizational uh, charts show the position first and the current person in that position second. And there's a reason for that because, you know, like in the e-myth, this position is responsible for these tasks. This is what is expected for this position to do. Um, by having that clear, um, that is going to ensure accountability for those tasks. Mm -hmm. It's also going to be um, very clear who does what. And you're able to maximize efficiency because it may be in your mapping process, you realize that um, you've got two people doing the same tasks in two different departments that you can now merge because mm -hmm. they're doing, you know, basically the same task, but two different departments. So it, it's good to be able to look at that, um, what positions are responsible for what tasks. And, and then the fifth. Go, oh, go the ahead. Fifth are there level. more levels? Yeah. One last level. Uh, okay, this great. Is, this is the important one. This is um, my favorite. It is the E-Suite Influencers. Um, that's my little nod to the E-Myth. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is actually where your vision and mission and values and goals of, the, of your business live. 
And they are like the little captains of the ships um, that are going to help decide <clears throat> where your company is going, how they're going to get there, and also what is it going to look like? What is it going to feel like? Um, so when you're making decisions and, um, and thinking about what you're going to do next in your company, these are the influencers that are going to influence how you are doing your tasks, how you are presenting your tasks. Things like, uh, how do you want your team to interact with each other? How do you want your team to interact with clients? Is there a certain format for um, how you want emails sent out? Is there a certain format that you want all of your financial statements to look at? Um, what does your letterhead look at like? Um, and also the values of your team. What values does your business have that you need your team to also have? Which is really going into culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so part of what uh, I'm getting is that this takes a business away from random growth, which is how so many business owners grow. And it's more about strategic growth of being very, very mindful of what you want to navigate towards. So you're more likely to actually achieve what you want your business to look like instead of what somebody else might want your business to look like. And that you have five levels. I'm just going to review them really quickly because uh, I was taking lots and lots of notes. Uh, <laughs> le level one is the main stage, which is all about the client experience, which is so valuable. Everything is really about the client experience, which is why I believe you probably have it at level two, uh, level one. But then level two is more of the back office stuff of what are the processes, the SOPs, the workflow that needs to happen. And then level three is about supporting that with the toolbox that gives the technology, the tools, the equipment to be able to not just serve the clients of today, but also be able to look at how to start to grow and scale your firm uh, without having it be something that drains and adds stress to everybody. Then you move on to level four, where you're identifying the positions that are required, because sometimes you might have things that need to be done, but you don't have that position yet even identified. And this starts to let you be more future focused by looking at the positions instead of just the people. And then the last one, um, which is the sweet spot, is the E-suite influencers. And, and that is really about having that clear vision of what it is that your ideal business looks like and what it is that you're driving for towards so that it is aligned with your um, values. You're able to now create a culture. You're looking at bringing people onto your team that are aligned with your vision, your values, and fit into that culture. Uh, did I miss anything? No, no, that was good. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and, 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 and the way that you were able to describe it gave me that picture with each floor in a theater of, of how one actually blends in with the other. Um, mm -hmm. So you talked about the floors. Um, was there anything else that we're skipping as far as the floors go with the um, architectural ap approach? I just want to make sure that we got it all. Yes. No, that, that's good. I have an example yeah. of doing this. So uh, in your lead conversion um, process, a lot of times you have your initial contact and inquiry, okay? So if we were to map this now in this way, we have um, at the first level on that main stage, you are being contacted for information about your business. Mm -hmm. And then to think about what is happening for the second level is what tasks need to happen and that would be um, you want to respond properly to the email or the voice message that was left for you. Um, and then after that task, then you have you want to gather the information uh, about the prospects, accounting needs, and services required. And then you want to schedule a consultation meeting. Okay. So those are your tasks. And if you look at your third level, equipment or technology do you need to complete those tasks um we're going to start 
from the bottom. Mm. Uh, if you got a voice message, that means you have a phone. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then if you're responding to an email, that means you have a computer. Uh, you also need internet service, um, Outlook email, or um, I don't know if you're using Gmail, but some type of email software. If you have a phone, um, are you providing that phone for your employee or are you using a virtual phone like Grasshopper, for example, mm -hmm. uh, to put that software on the employee's phone? So those are some things you want to think of. Uh, if you are gathering information, do you have a specific form? Well, is that form in Excel or Word? Uh, you're still going to need a computer. Um, and then things like for scheduling, are you using scheduling software? Um, like Candly, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, so you, a lot of the basic equipment you're going to see is used in all of your tasks but there's going to be specific equipment that you need for specific tasks. So then um, going up to the fourth level, what position is going to be responsible for completing these tasks? So we have um, whoever re is responding, is that going to be the sales manager, the office manager, uh, whoever answers the phone, the intern, you know, um, who is going to uh be responding first. And then mm -hmm. are you going to have someone else then contact them to gather that information? Um, and then who is going to be the one representing the business in the consultation meeting? Um, are you going to have to schedule another person to come in to this process? So just some things to think of. And then we have um, our fifth level, the E-suite influencers. And how I like to describe it for them, uh, for the fifth floor is how do you want it to look? How do you want it to sound? How do you want it to feel? So do you want specific language being used? Do you want um, specific um, wordage? Um, you know, what do you want it to look like? What do you want it to feel like? Mm -hmm. so, so what I'm hearing is that as you're describing this, I'm, I'm thinking about my business and that this is something that really could be applied to a firm of any size from yes. the smaller firms all the way up to really the big four and that it's adaptable. But what it does is it takes a lot of things that might be in someone's head and, and now is able to get it out of the, your head so that it can be delegated, it can be improved upon. And mm -hmm. it also can be adding to the awareness of something that you might have missed totally yeah. that could actually improve the whole process. And the best part about it is think about using it as a training material. Mm -hmm. When you have someone come in and, you know, like the E-Myth, they have, um, you have your company uh, organization book, you know, your manual. And it details how you do everything so that no matter who is doing it, they can do it the exact same way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so that is the other part of it as well. For using it for training materials, it is really good. And one of the things that um, you, you tend to light up is on four or five with the E suite influencers. So can you go a little bit more into maybe how that that particular level, the uh, influences shape the growth of a firm. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever had a, a business owner, uh, client that you are onboarding and you're like, okay, so what is your vision and mission? And they look at you and they're like, I want to make money, mm -hmm. a lot of money. <laughs> Um, that's really where you want to start asking them questions. And these are the, the E-suite, those influencers. Um, how do you want your company to look? You know, how do you want your local to look? Um, do you have a specific, uh, format for your, um, messages to go from your team to your clients? You know, it's just asking, you know, how does this look? How does this feel? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I talk about how does this feel? Because that really is how do you want your client to feel 
when this is presented to them. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we have done in our firm is we have, uh, we call it the cover um, for the financials, but there is a page two. And on that page two, we have a breakdown of um, any key performance indicators that the client wants to track. Um, we have a short summary of what the balance sheet looks like and what it means. And we have a short summary of um, the profit and loss. Um, and again, we have a couple accounts that we're usually tracking more closely than um than the rest, you know, because you'll you'll have, you know, your um a portion of your expense report is actually going to only make up maybe five percent of total expenses. But there are a couple that you are really watching, your payroll, your repairs. Mm -hmm. Um for some people it's contract labor. So just so those things that we just want to call out so that when they do look through, they're like, there it is, there it is, there it is. And then when we meet uh, with some of our clients, we are meeting monthly to go over their financials, some are quarterly. Um, and when we do have our meetings, we go through those uh, financials and we're asking, uh, answering their questions and we're explaining why, um, why the debt increased when they took out that other loan? Uh, why does it look on the profit and loss that they are making money, but yet when you go to the statement of cash flows, um, there isn't any money? Yeah. You know, what is that debt repayment going through um, just to make those debt payments each month? Yeah. And and this is part of where I see it being um, more of the advisory role that you're starting to move into because you're not just asking the compliance questions, but you're really starting to get a better understanding of how what's going on now affects their future. So one of the things that's I'm curious about, would you have this initial a conversation as part of a kickoff meeting with a new client or where does it fit into that uh, map as far as the onboarding process? Um, for a lot of our clients, we have uh, there, some packages include doing budgeting and cash flow planning. And those are the, the clients that we're going to take them through that process. And so when we start the, or I, I say budget and what we call it is actually strategic forecasting because mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it just it just sounds better because we are actually looking at what they have done in the last 12 months and then we are forecasting what the next 12 months are going to look like. And then we put in um, things that we know that are going to repeat, uh, some things that we don't really know, but we can estimate based on the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. um, and then we look at the debt repayment. Uh, as we're doing that, then we're also asking, well, this is how we've been doing your accounts payable. You know, is it, how, what do you think about if we did it this way? You know, it would streamline the process a little bit more. Um, instead of uh, you writing the checks, why don't we use bill.com? Mm -hmm. um, and then each, um, weekly as we're going through the cash plan we can designate okay these are the bills that need to be paid this is the cash that we have and we got enough so let's pay all the bills this time and say next time well don't really want to pay this bill because we have uh, these loan payments are coming out early next week mm -hmm. so let's let's wait um the extra week you know we've got a, a week more for uh, the due date for that bill. So let's wait and see if we don't get more uh, income, more accounts receivable coming. So by doing this and having these meetings with them, it leads towards more predictable growth. Um, mm -hmm. And it also improves the cash flow of a business because now it's being done more strategically instead of someone just having a bill come in and either they're totally ignoring it and forget about it or they're paying it immediately and not looking at the bigger picture. Right. The, the uh, question that comes up out of that also is once you create this, 
do you find that there's a trigger or a time when it's great to get it out again and review the map? Uh, reviewing the map, I would always say yearly. Um, mm -hmm. because when you're doing a strategic forecast, that's just the best time to have your maps and your goals and the things that you're going to look at. Um, and with some of our business owners, just having a, this is the month revenue that you need to be bringing in, not so much what you're selling, but what you are actually bringing in and your accounts receivable each month, uh, that really helps them because they can go out and they can sell but mm -hmm. they don't realize that they're not collecting the money very fast. Yeah. So, yeah. A a absolutely. Uh, so this is a great way to be able to um, lay everything out in a very visual way. It's easy to look at. Um, it complements SOPs. So what particular tools would you say? Is it just having a whiteboard or maybe uh, big post-its that you put on the wall and you start to do a brain dump there. Any particular tools that you find you enjoy when you're doing mapping? Okay, when I when I map, I love the post-it notes on the wall. That it that is my favorite. Uh huh. Um, especially if you uh, splurge and you get the colored post-it notes. <laughs> yep. Um, but I've seen you can do this in whiteboard. Um, and I know like the Microsoft Teams, uh, you can share a whiteboard in a team meeting, and everyone can write on the board. Um, so that is helpful as well. Um, a, a lot of it, you know, if you want to have something that looks like a flow chart, um, PowerPoint, I know early in my career, we would use PowerPoint to make flow charts. I know there is lucid chart that is a, uh, flow chart software, and you can also do other types of mapping as well, but they've got the stock. Um, diagrams and that you can just drag over and then you can enter some mm -hmm. text. Um, so that is a great way to do that. If you're looking more for a checklist, um, starting out, you can do an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, you can do a Word document. Um, there is a software called Jetpack Workflow. Um, and that is you create jobs broken down into tasks that can then be assigned to different team members. So you can have one client and like the monthly accounting tasks broken down, who's going to reconcile the bank accounts, the loans and things like that, mm -hmm. all the steps that you need in one place. And then everyone is just clicking off every day that that task pops up. They just click it off when it is done. Um, there are some people who want to also incorporate um, screenshots in their procedures and, uh, scribe is a software that will allow you to do that. And you actually just turn on scribe and you just go on your, on your computer screen and you're like, okay, so I come here and I click, and then I, on this screen, I click here and it will produce screenshots with a nice big red circle around mm -hmm. where you need to click. So those are nice as well. Um, but really, it is a visual representation of what you are doing in your company. How you want that to look is up to each company. Mm -hmm. So so it's very, very adaptable, uh, similar to how you schedule appointments. Some people still like to write it in their calendars and other people mm -hmm. like to use um, online software. And, and that's true with mapping also. You can do it very organically with the post-it mm -hmm. notes so that there's a lot of mobility to it. And then you can do something more structured um, such as with the Jetpack workflow. Mm -hmm. oh, excellent. Um, Janelle, I have, I knew I was gonna learn a lot from you. I took away so much information, knowing things that I didn't know before. I can absolutely see how this can uh, set a firm up for growth um, because the EMIT is something that applies to every firm. And also it allows you to be more strategic. It has predictable growth. So I've enjoyed our conversation. And some of the things that we tucked on, touched on was um, being able to understand how strategic mapping applies to firm growth, elevating that client experience in order to boost retention and architect. 
the architect for firm success. So if somebody wanted to find out more about what it is that you do, um, how this can be a part of their firm and um, check out step-by-step -step accounting, what's the best way for them to connect with you? I would say the best way is to go to our website um, and Melissa is our owner um, and she is our, our, our founding member as I like to refer to her. <laughs> um, but if you're on there, you are able to contact her with an email and um, that is a great place to reach out. We also have some blogs that she has posted, some articles uh, where she has talked about uh, other things. Um, we also are now hosting a monthly roundtable for our clients. Uh, and that is just to talk about different topics. Um, so this month, we're actually going to be talking about um, debt structure. Yeah. Fantastic. I appreciate the engaging conversation and everybody that is joining us today. This is Lauren Fogelman with Business Success Solutions, showing accounting firm owners how to double their income working half the time.